gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Who's gonna win this year? All right, come on, just just say it already. Stop dragging it on so much. Who's who's it gonna be? Of American Idol, 2002 is Kelly Clarkson. There we go. Yeah, boy. Kelly got that W. That's what I'm talking about. That victory royale. Thank you. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Steiner. Today's Monday Nostalgia. Happy Monday. If you're new around here on Mondays, we talk about things that I personally have nostalgia for. Back when I was an impressionable child, I watched a lot of American Idol. Even though I was only six years old, I still remember when season one aired. I would continue to watch the show for the next couple of seasons, only to join my dad in voting for contestants in seasons four through 10. At this point, I was in high school, I had too much going on to be bothered with really watching any TV at all, so while I saw bits and pieces of season 11, I really haven't seen the show since. So here we are in 2019! I haven't thought about American Idol in almost a decade, and I was randomly recommended one of their recent videos on YouTube, so I thought, you know what? Let's take a look at the current season and see what they're doing, because I, I don't know if I'll like it or not. don't know anything about American Idol, American Idol is a singing talent show that started back in 2002 where a set of three judges and the American viewers decide who will be the next American Idol. Every season is essentially the same. First, there's a few weeks of auditions. These showcase every person that goes on to the next round. Baby, there's a shark in the water. While also showcasing a lot of bad singers. Worms, short, fat, hairy ones, long, tall, skinny ones. These are used to primarily make fun of people who think they can sing. It's a bit messed up when you think about it, but it is what it is. If two out of three judges like the singer during the audition, they go on to Hollywood, where they'll perform in front of an actual audience, and the judges will decide from there who will be the top 24. At that point, the top 24 singers will go on to a live show. Here, each of the contestants perform live in front of the entire United States. Each contestant will have a specific phone number that you, the audience viewer, can call in and vote on. Those that have the least amount of votes go home, while everyone else stays until we have the top 12 who are regarded as the best of the best. A lot of pretty big singers over the years have actually came out of the top 12. Week after week, the top 12 has dwindled down until you get that year's American Idol. In some ways, American Idol is an opportunity for very talented singers to become successful. In other ways, American Idol is a complete joke and it's really just another reality show dedicated to making fun of people and taking your time as a viewer. It, it, it honestly kind of depends on the episode. Looking back to when I did watch it, I did appreciate the show for a few reasons. Like I said, it gives an opportunity to talented singers to be successful. That was always pretty dope to me. As someone who loves music, I even thought about auditioning for American Idol at some point. The cutoff is 28 years old, so maybe I even could still go audition for him. I'm thinking about singing my hit song, Double Decker Taco Supreme. Nachos Bel Grande, Double Decker Taco Supreme, Chalupa Craven's Box. Soft Taco, Soft Taco Supreme, Crunchy Taco. I'm sure I'll get in. Either way, I love music, and a show that is dedicated to musicians and singers was something that I loved as a kid. Every week usually had a theme to it, and it was cool to hear all the different types of songs that were sang. Since it was a participation show, I also enjoyed being a part of the process that jump-started these singers' careers. At least for the most part. After I got to like season 8, I got tired of voting. See, the way it would work is each contestant had a phone number that you could call. So you call the number, wait until it goes through, if it goes through, you voted for them. Then you can redial the number, call again, and vote again. If it doesn't go through, then you just wasted like a 30 seconds of your time. You still have to redial the number and let the vote go through. Now, when I was younger, I volunteered to vote with my dad so that I could stay out past 10 o'clock. However, after a few years of this, I just got really tired of it. But anyways, I haven't seen this show since 2011 have no idea how the show is run now, I have no idea who's running it, who the judges are, and of course I know none of the contestants, but let's see if American Idol in current year is worth watching today, in season 17. 
17 seasons. Why? So right off the bat, a lot has changed since I've seen this show. Surprisingly, Ryan Seacrest is still hosting. I, I, he really doesn't look much older either. Also, this episode was an hour and a half long. So I could have watched a movie or something. Or like two episodes of Supernatural, which I'm currently in season two and it's pretty dope. Instead, I'm watching American Idol. Also, we got new judges. These are people I never would have thought would be judging American Idol. See, I still remember Paula, Simon, and Randy, the OGs. They each had their own individual personality and they worked well off each other. Now we have pop star Katy Perry, who from what I can tell is only on the show to lust after young guys. We also have Luke Bryan, a country singer, who I enjoyed his first four albums and then everything after that, he just sounded the exact same. And then there's Lionel Richie, who's a good singer. I just haven't heard about him in years and kind of confused. Like these three judges, they, it's, it's all over the place. I don't, they don't really have much chemistry from what I could tell either. So I, I don't know. It's just one episode that I watched. There's no telling. On the positive side, there are some things that they changed in the show that I do appreciate. For one, you don't have to call a phone number anymore. So that's cool. Instead, it's all about texting in their app, which, you know, that makes sense. That's very current year. Also, you can only vote 10 times per contestant and you can only vote during the span of the episode, which means you don't have to be like 10 year old Zach and vote over a hundred times for a contestant in two hours. It's great. Instead of having two separate days dedicated to the show every week, they're putting it all in one episode that week and you find out who's leaving that night. It's a lot quicker, more efficient, and it's a lot better than having to watch an entire episode that just ends up showcasing everything you just saw the night before in this episode with the actual results. I'm, I'm really glad that they started doing this. They're still doing theme nights. That's cool. The episode I watched was all about Queen. There were some bangers on here. It was also some just okay songs, I guess. They also added in a duet section, which I don't particularly remember ever doing, but it works. I actually kind of liked it. But let's talk about the contestants this year. This episode in particular featured the top eight. And I gotta be real with you. Some of these folks have talent, some of the others, not so much, but I'm not gonna talk about all eight of them because that's irrelevant. They just put in the top three online recently, so let's talk about those right quick. There's 17 year old Madison who has some pretty good chops. She's a pretty good singer. I can see why she's here. Missing a bit of that wow factor for me though. We also have 18 year old Lane, a country boy, when he sang some Johnny Cash in this episode, I dug it. It was dope. Again, nothing really special here, but a competent singer. And 25 year old Alejandro, which is the one that actually interested me the most out of the eight that I watched. He doesn't have the best voice, but he does have some really good guitar skills and apparently makes up new arrangements for every song he sings. And he sings like some of his own music on the show. So that's kind of dope to me. But based off of these contestants and the other ones that I saw, I, I gotta answer the question, would I watch more of this season? Season 17. Why are there so many seasons of this show? I don't understand. Let's be real. The easy answer is no. <laughs> I'm not watching any more American Idol simply because I don't want to take the time to watch an hour and a half of cover songs every single week. I do appreciate that the show is only once a week now instead of twice a week. I do appreciate that the show is still going a little bit because it does help some talented singers become successful. But at the end of the day, for me personally, if I want to watch a bunch of cover songs, I can just go on YouTube and probably find even better singers than what we've seen here. And if I really, if I really want to watch these people sing, there's a YouTube channel for American Idol now. So if I cared enough, it's there. They're keeping up with the times. So that's good enough for me. I do think it's still dope that you can make it as a singer with American Idol. But while as a kid, I wanted to be on the show, I really just don't care now. I feel like there's so many better ways to make it as a musician considering the internet is way bigger now than it was in 2002. Also, I've just realized that I don't care about talent shows on TV anymore. They're interesting to look back on and I wouldn't mind going back and looking at some of the older seasons of the show, seeing if the winners hold up, maybe I'll do that. But watching week to week when the show's probably rigged anyways, especially now, I don't wanna hear Katy Perry and Luke Bryan every week. Just no, please no. So, does American Idol hold up? Honestly, it is kind of better, logistically speaking, than it used to be. But it just feels like these kind of shows should have stopped being made years ago.
Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Skillshare. Learning skills on your own is difficult, but with Skillshare, things could be a whole lot easier. If you're like me, you like learning new skills and improving on your current skills. Whether that's video editing, script writing, or music production, Skillshare has hundreds of online classes taught by professionals that you can take right now for less than $10 a month. Not only is this the most affordable way to increase your skills, but you can get an additional two months for free if you check out the link in the description box below. If you do decide to sign up, you'll be supporting your everyday nerd. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on American Idol are, whether it's this season or if you used to watch it. Like, let me know. I'm interested. I did watch this show a lot as a kid, and I am kind of intrigued to go back and listen to some of the music of all the winners throughout the years. I know at least a few of them I really, really like and I still listen to this day. And then there's like a whole six or seven of them that I never got a chance to see. And I don't know, I don't even know who those are. Also, usually the top 12 of each season, some of those singers ended up being more famous than the actual winners that season. So it could be cool to go back and look at those too. I don't know if that's something you're interested in. Let me know down in the comments. Anyways, thanks again for watching this episode of Your Everyday Nerd. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.